really don't have to worry about endocrine disruption in your cosmetics. To understand why, you have to know a little bit more about how the endocrine system works. The endocrine system is one of the body systems really focused on hormones. Hormones are signaling molecules that are sent to different parts of the body to stimulate change. Certain chemicals we produce will fit into certain receptors to cause the activation of gene expression to eventually make those signaling molecules. For example, estradiol will fit into the estrogen receptor to cause an effect. Endocrine disruption is where a chemical either acts like a hormone or interferes with it. A chemical may fit in the estrogen receptor to cause gene expression, which translates to an estrogenic effect. Most regulatory definitions of endocrine disruption are determined by assays that are not human relevant. They won't have estradiol in the scenario, which a chemical would have to outcompete in the human body to get into that receptor and cause an effect. Estradiol has a very strong affinity for the estrogen receptor, so the chemical in question should have a comparable or stronger affinity, or the concentration should be high enough to make up for that lower affinity. Do cosmetics cause endocrine disruption? Realistically, probably not. The problem with cosmetic ingredients, while in certain assays they have been shown to activate the, for example, estrogen receptor to cause gene expression, their affinity for estrogen is dramatically lower than estradiol. The affinity of parabens in cosmetics, roughly 10,000 times lower than estradiol. For parabens to have the chance to have an estrogenic effect, they would have to be used in massive concentrations that are not relevant to cosmetics. Why is there so much noise about endocrine disruption in cosmetics? Cosmetics? Unpopular opinion? Sensationalism. 